Hello, my name is Carrie Jensen, and this is a quick look at Live Bindings in RAD Studio. This is part one of a five part series. This part is an overview of Live Bindings. RAD Studio's Live Bindings is a mechanism for associating a property of an object with an expression that is evaluated at runtime. While live bindings are most often associated with enabling data awareness and FireMonkey controls, they provide RAD Studio developers with an important new tool for creating persistent associations between objects. Let's look at the parts of live bindings and how they work together. The first part is RAD Studio's expression engine. The expression engine was first introduced into RAD Studio in RAD Studio XE2. The expression engine takes string expressions and evaluates them to a value. That value might be a string, an integer, a boolean value, an object, or something else. String expressions consist of four parts. Literals, operators, properties, and methods. The methods can be further divided into method pointers and custom methods. There are also output converters. Output converters take the expression evaluated by the expression engine and assign it to a property of a different type. Scope is an important concept in expressions with live bindings. Scope defines the object or objects that are visible to the expression engine. When an object is in scope, its properties and its methods are available for use in the string expressions. There is always at least one, uh, one scope, but there are often two. One is associate, associated with what is called the control component, and the other is associated with what is called the source component. Quite often, the control component is known as the output scope. It is the target of the expression engine. In other words, the value of the expression created by the expression engine is assigned to a property of the component in the output scope or control component. The source component is often a component visible to the expression engine in the input expression. The input expression is the expression whose value will be assigned to the property of the control in the output expression. Now quite often the direction is as I just described a source component expression being assigned to a control component expression but it also can go the other way from the control component expression to the source component expression and in some conditions it's bidirectional control component to source component or source component to control component. Let's look at an example in RAD Studio. This example is found in the VCL Live Bindings project that is available with the associated webinar and white paper. Here I have a type of live binding called a bind expression item. The control component for this expression is the edit called value one edit. The target or the the control expression is the text property of value one edit. The source control is value two edit and the source expression is the text property of value two edit. In this case we have two expressions associated with this live binding. This first expression is it assigned to control that is source control expression to control or source component expression to control component expression where the value of the text property of value 2 edit is assigned to the text property of value 1 edit. In the second expression the assignment is assigned to source where the value of the control component expression is assigned to the source components expression. When we watch this live binding in action, we can see that this live binding operates by moving uh, synchronizing the two components, and this happens 
uh, both from source to control and control to source. Let's now talk about managed versus unmanaged live bindings. The bind expression items that we just saw is a managed live binding. A managed live binding requires code written by you, in other words code you manage, to ex inform the expression engine that a change has occurred. In an unmanaged live binding, the components themselves are responsible for informing the expression engine that something has happened. Let's return to Rouse Studio and look at the differences between these two With the bind expression that we just looked at, there is an event handler on the onChange value, and this event, event handler uses an, a component that is placed when you create a live binding called a bindings list, and it calls the notify method to inform the expression engine that something has changed. In this case, we're sending sender as the argument, indicating that the live binding engine should evaluate expressions associated with sender and any properties of sender. In that case, what the expression engine does is evaluate those two expressions and perform the bindings that we saw in the code. Here is another live binding that we can look at. This one is an unmanaged live binding. In this case, the status bar is the control component, and a special component called bindscope db is the source component. The expression consists of literals, operators, custom methods, and properties of the source component. Those values are assigned to the simple text property of the status bar. In this particular case, there are no event handlers associated with this event. Let's look at the code again. When we are active and we are navigating, the simple act of navigating causes the status bar to be updated. This is because the unmanaged live binding is using an observer API to note when there are changes made to the source component and inform the expression engine to update its information, update its expression and bind the data to the, the output expression. Thank you for joining me today in this quick look at live bindings. For additional information, visit www.embarcadero.com slash rad in action slash live bindings. There you'll find the replay of my webinar Visualizing Live Data with Live Bindings in RAD Studio. You'll also find a link to my paper, Live Bindings in RAD Studio, as well as links to the other videos in this Quick Look series. For information about the current Delphi Developer Days tour, you can visit DelphiDeveloperDays.com. For information about my latest book, Delphi In-Depth Client Datasets, visit JensenDatasystems.com slash CDSbook. Finally, you can contact me at cjensen at jensendatasystems.com or follow my blog or follow me on Twitter where I tweet about Delphi topics several times a week.